the zoo was never going to compete uh, with, with police, fire, and safety. Americans love animals, everyone from Betty White to Newt Gingrich. More than 150 million Americans visit zoos every year. But many zoos are in trouble. Budget cuts are forcing many zoos to make up for funding shortfalls by laying off workers, cutting important educational programs, reducing operating hours, deferring maintenance, and raising ticket prices. We spoke with the Reason Foundation's Director of Government Reform to understand the problem. The National League of Cities recently put out a report that showed that for six years straight, uh, cities have been facing declining revenues, meaning every single year revenues are coming in lower and lower. And so when budgets get tight, there is considerable pressure on policymakers to keep funding uh, what you might call the core priorities, things like public safety, infrastructure. And so what that means is we're going to have to have a, an increasing role for the private sector to handle all of those other things that citizens have become accustomed to before we got into the tighter fiscal climate that we're seeing today and we can expect to see into the future. Public-private partnerships using the private sector is a terrific opportunity. Dewey Bartlett became mayor of Tulsa, Oklahoma during a budget crisis in 2009. We simply could not afford the uh, capital contribution necessary to get our zoo up to where it would receive accreditation but also would be an enjoyable experience for our community. So we made a decision, privatize it, change the operations, get people involved that are committed to operating our zoo properly, but also have a business perspective of let's see what we can do to enhance the experience but also get more people to come and get more money, become more attractive. The situation at the Tulsa Zoo prior to the public-private partnership was one where the zoo was declining, both with its infrastructure and um, the staff's ability to take care of the zoo because of city budget cuts. One of the primary reasons cities are looking to public-private partnerships to, to operate their cultural amenities is because it allows the city to, dr to draw down its subsidy. And what you find is that the private sector and philanthropists are more willing to give donations to nonprofits when they operate these things because they trust the nonprofit more uh, to do right with the money. You are taking an entity who has a vested interest in a certain asset, like a Friends of the Zoo type organization, and you're giving them more responsibility, not just to be a supplemental partner in fundraising and other sort of lower scale activities, but actually turning over the operation to someone who has a vested interest in seeing it succeed. The difference between a public, the public-private partnership and being under city management is we basically now have all of our staff uh, works for one organization, which is Tulsa Zoo Management Incorporated, a, a not-for-profit organization, as opposed to a portion of the staff working for the city and a portion of the staff working for the nonprofit. And so I think that there's just a, a better cohesiveness to the group. Uh, things like policies and procedures are the same now for everybody. And although that sounds small, it isn't so small. Uh, they're able to uh, receive the funds that are generated by admissions, et cetera, so they have a revenue stream. We committed to a specific amount of money uh, every year, but no more. Now they've taken over that operation. They've had it now for a couple of years, and they're doing a very, very good job. The public is reacting really well to the public-private partnership. Through our members and visitors, donors that come out to the zoo, um, they can't believe the turnaround. And it's small things, it's having cleaner grounds, more well-kept grounds, making small improvements in some of the uh, familiar animal exhibits like our flamingo yard, uh, seeing the brand new sea lion exhibit. Our attendance has increased over 14 percent from last year to this year. Um, those type of expansions would not have been possible under just city management because the zoo is never going to be able to compete with streets and safety. About 75 percent of the accredited urban zoos and aquariums in this country are run through public-private partnerships and that's something many citizens probably don't even notice is uh, they think that their city is the one that's running the zoo, when in fact the city may technically own that asset, but it's the private sector through nonprofit arrangements that are actually operating those amenities and actually investing more than the cities would be able to do themselves under constrained budgets.